You're about to listen to the unadulterated word of God from Reverend David Kakati. So what was the devil trying to do? The devil knows that when she comes to church, the presence of God will heal her. So he wants to uproot her from church. And it was the angel of the church that went there with the cane. You know? Me, I don't chase people with cane. Have I, have I, have I killed anybody here before? Every church has an angel that ministered to the church and to the church members. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so, because intercession is going on in the church the angel of the church will have to make sure that everybody in the church must be able to benefit so the angel went in her sleep and disciplined her may an angel appear with a cane in your dream and bring you to the house of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, that means peace is a witness. Yeah, the power. Above for a trick in the That means praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And many of us are the ATO. Yes, we are. And here, Casa, NTA. But we thank God for the deliverance. Amen. Amen. There are times God will have to go the extra mile and appear in vision. God doesn't have to appear in visions before we respond. When we hear the word of God, we have to respond. When you hear, yes. hear the preaching of the word, you have to respond. But some of us will not respond. So God has to go the extra mile and go and use visions and, and dreams in fact some of us after God has given us visions and dreams still we don't hear there are so some he has to even go and use prophecies and even that still some of us don't hear. I pray that God shall open your ears I pray that God shall open your eyes I pray that God shall open your understanding whatever God is telling you I pray that you'll be able to catch it fast in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Amen, Amen. Amen. this is our second service we welcome you to the second of the two services we have been having here every Sunday I know that God will deposit something in your life. Any property the devil has given to you which is not from God, you will drop it here before you go. Whether it is sickness, whether it is disease, whether it is affliction, whether it is attack, because you have come here, if it is the property of the enemy, you will drop it here before you go. The Bible says that any tree that my father has not planted shall be uprooted. So whatever has been planted in your life and around your life will not survive today i said it will not survive today in the mighty name of jesus amen. christ amen amen may the lord help us so that the enemy will not have his way in our lives amen amen oh magnify the lord with me so when you mean come for a psalm 34 verse 3 let us exalt his name together magnify the Lord with me so you magnify the Lord not your challenges you magnify the Lord not your challenges what you do is that you magnify God you don't magnify your challenges you don't magnify your problems you magnify God praise the Lord and then as you magnify God God will degrade your challenges he will degrade them praise the Lord as you magnify God God will humiliate the opposition 
But when you magnify the problems, and you magnify the sicknesses, you reduce God, you belittle God, you incapacitate God. So the Bible says that magnify the Lord. As you magnify him, he will swallow up your battles. As you magnify the Lord, your contenders shall be uprooted. What are you magnifying? And what do you want to magnify? Anything you elevate. Anytime you elevate something, something else comes down. Anytime a political party goes up and wins election, another political party is crying and has gone down. So, so if you are magnifying God, your problems are coming down. But if you are magnifying your problems, God cannot magnify himself. In Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say, Father, open my eyes. Say, Father, open my eyes. Say, Lord, stir my faith. Say, Father, give me understanding. Say, Father, transform my life. Say, Father, save my soul. Say, Father, let me experience your miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The one whose eyes not open shall be destroyed. He will stumble. And he will be trapped. So your eye must be opened. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because when your eye is open, you realize that there are some battles that are opportunities. When your eye is open, you know that some battles are opportunities. Amen. Amen. But when your eye is not open, you are not able to figure out what God is doing. When your eyes not open, you end up fighting God. When God is even promoting you, you will fight him. One day, God wanted to transport Joseph to his place of greatness. And he used his brothers to do it. And the brothers put him in a pit. And they sold him into slavery. To the place where his greatness was located. If Joseph didn't have understanding, and his eyes were blinded spiritually, he would have resisted it. Am I communicating at all? So when your eyes open, some battles are opportunities. Some some oppositions are equipment of elevation. Some oppositions are equipments of your elevation. But if your eye is not open, you may fight the agenda of God for your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Some people's eyes are, are not open, so they even see their spouse as their enemies. The spouse that God has brought into your life to better your life. You fight him. But when your eyes open, you begin to see the good things that are in your spouse. Because everybody and every human being has strength and weakness. Every human being has positives and negatives. But when your eyes open, you see the positives, you see the strength. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And when you are having conference with the devil, and the devil is speaking to you all you see is negatives in your own children you see negatives everybody you see negative in everybody say lord open my eyes praise the lord Hallelujah. as we are getting close to the end of the year people are afraid 
because getting to the year a lot of evil things happen that takes the life of people that kill people you must not be afraid because you belong to God those who don't have God they are helpless but you who has God you are not helpless praise the Lord Hallelujah. Amen so any mechanism that the enemy want to use to take people's life the Lord shall deliver you from it I said the Lord shall deliver you from it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Amen. hallelujah Amen. in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 he says for as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood Jesus also became a partaker of flesh and blood so that through death he might destroy him that has the power of death because human beings we are flesh and blood Jesus also has to become flesh and blood so that he will destroy the one that has power of of death praise the lord Hallelujah. somebody had the power of death his name is the devil he had the power of death but from the day that jesus came to die and rose again satan doesn't have the power of death again he has it over people who don't belong to god but those of us who belong to god he doesn't have that power over our lives he used to have it before but Jesus destroyed him so be confident confident praise the lord hallelujah i said be confident amen amen jesus took it from him so in revelation 1 verse 18 jesus said i am the one that liveth and i was dead behold i am alive forevermore and i have the keys of hell and death this is jesus speaking then i have the keys of hell and death i can open it and i can shut it am i communicating at all so every death door that jesus has not opened and the devil is trying to open it will shut it in the name of jesus every death door that jesus has not opened and the enemy and some power is trying to open will shut it in the name of jesus Christ. so when someone tell you then the person who said it to you is an aigbe man the people are shaking he's either a great man or he comes from the north those two places they are dangerous places <laughs> so when the person tells you that you will see then you are afraid he doesn't have the key I said he doesn't have the key he cannot open that door when you get to the door or the gate of death it is shut against you I said when you when you get to the door or the gate of death <laughs> it is shut against you you will try to enter but you cannot enter because the one who has the key who is God Jesus Christ he has not opened it he has you opened the door and the gate of life for you he has opened that one praise the Lord hallelujah I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how long and how far you have reached. I said the gate of death. I said the door is shut. I said the door is shut. And I command your reversal. I command your reversal. I said I command your reversal. It doesn't matter how close you are. By the blood of Jesus Christ. And in the name of Jesus Christ. I command your reversal. You are coming back 
Jesus by which I said you are coming back in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. There is nothing like the journey of no return. You will come back. I said you will come back. I was telling them in the first service. One of our members felt sick. He was admitted at the hospital. Seriously sick. And the hospital people said it was typhoid. And so we went to pray for her at the, at the clinic. And so when I came back, my wife told me, I see obituary. It is the person that this your church member who is at the clinic who is on the obituary. And everybody was shocked. When they saw the obituary. So I went to sit down. Then my wife said, if you, if you like, don't go and pray for her. And be listening to the doctors who are saying it is typhoid. She will die and you will see. So I went to sit on the bed. Very discouraged. Then the Lord came. He said, why are you discouraged? I said, sorry. I said, sorry. When matters come up, you just deal with it. So this one too is one of the matters that have come So when they discharge her from the hospital, I want to pray for her. And she said, I can no longer live. Give my children to this, my friend. To take care of them. When a person speaks like that, it means the forces of death have taken the person far. She's no longer ready to live. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then I said to her, No, just say this after me. Say, I will not die. I will live. That's all I want you to say. And without strength. And with a lot of weakness. She said, I shall not die. I shall live. Immediately she said that. I commanded her soul to come back. And it came back. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why did I need her to do that? I need her agreement. Because without her agreement, she will make my work difficult. Praise God. Hallelujah. But once I have her agreement, it becomes very easy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter how anointed a man of God is if you don't agree with him his anointing cannot help you that's why when he declares healing you say amen it's an affirmation of agreement when he declares grace you say amen once you say amen no altar can interfere with you no curse can interfere with you no, no idol can interfere because he says that if two of you shall agree heaven will do it praise the lord hallelujah so jesus i have the keys of hell yeah yeah and death praise god hallelujah if you want to enter Presidential Palace Jubilee House. If you want to enter there, so person who called Jubilee House, I will And your father is the one who has the key to that gate. Now say where Jah Eno was at, Safwa was at, upon Kesi. Will you struggle to enter? I said, will you struggle to enter? Will your father use the key against you? Papa, I'm fast at Safwa, I'm Mawana. You can enter. Whether you are qualified or not, your father has the key. Am I communicating at all? Your master, your Lord Jesus, has the key. and he is holding the keys on your behalf. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the one who has the key has power to shard, has power to. Open. Amen. 
Amen. Any door that will not help you, the Lord will shut it. Any Lord, any door that will go against you, the Lord will close it. But any door that will favor your cause, that will help your destiny, the Lord shall open it for you. I said the Lord shall open it for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Jesus said, I will give you the keys. The keys I'm holding, I'll give it to you. Matthew, Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. I will give you the keys. I will give you the keys. I will give you the keys. There are times when you want to enter the room, your father will give you the key. Go and open the door. When you were younger, when you were, your father will give you the keys. Go and open the door. Jesus said, I will give you the keys. The keys that Jesus is having, he will give it to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Open your hands. Say, I can see the keys. It is in my hands. I have the key. Not the juju man. Not the fetish priest. Not the witch. I have it. Because the Lord Jesus has given it to me. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So don't sit down. For any juju man to take you away before your time. Am I coming? I said, don't sit down for any fetish or, or, or witch to take you away before you phobia Because he has given the keys to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So death is something that nobody has power over. Nobody has control over. But Jesus has control over it. And that Jesus is in your life. And he has given you the keys to that control. Praise the Lord. You will only die when your time is up. When your time is not up. You must not go. Am I communicating? You must not go. You must grow and be full of yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Be full of yes. No doctor can sign your death warrant. No doctor. You have to be very careful of the things people are saying. In the name of expertise. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the name of expertise, there are some, there are some powers that are above expertise. They are satanic. They are beyond expertise. They are satanic. That lady that my wife told me that he go and pray for. When I went and I was praying for her, some demons started laughing at me. They said, they were laughing at me. They said, you sit there and listen to the doctors that it is time for. You will kill her and you see. But I didn't converse with them. I ordered them to go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And they left. So there are things that are called supernatural. And when they come against a person, medical science is helpless. Human techniques are helpless. So you employ medical science, but at the same time, you must deploy the supernatural. Am I communicating at all? Yes. One day, a lady came here one Thursday morning. She fell sick. And she couldn't walk. And she went to the clinic. According to her, she has spent 20 million already. And the sickness was still there. And then she came to another church around here. And the church took her and they, they took her for some days. They also took some uh, money from her. They also took some money from her. And they were taking care of her. But she said Thursday morning while she was lying in that church. She had a dream. And in the dream, I appeared in the dream. And I said, My daughter, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? This is not where you belong. Get up and let's go. So she said, In the dream, I, I was holding her and she was about to hold me to get up. And then she woke up. 
Then she told her friend, said, hey, I've seen pastor in the dream. No, I can't tell you say, hey, man, who are so far that you Then the friend told her, if you have seen pastor in the dream, and let's go to the church. And then now for the catch and says, who are so far that you move? So I was here. The morning service has closed, and I was here. So I say now, I no pass on na yapong. No, I say. When she came, no buy it. She was crying. Now also because she couldn't take a step. Esan say no timi nanti. According to her, there is a big hole before her. I say now Esan say now I'm not can see a bit than anything. Now when she takes the step, she will fall. Yeah, so soon in night for better. She was the only person seeing the big hole. Nobody else was seeing the big hole. Doctors were not seeing the big hole. They only collected her money. And she was still sick. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I prayed for her. In less than one minute. She started walking around. And she was not walking slowly. She was walking fast. The lady I'm talking about is in the service today. She's here today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord shall preserve you in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are lying. Which God did not put you there. Where the devil want to keep you there. By the fire of the Holy Spirit. By the blood of Jesus Christ. By the sword of the Lord. I bring you out of that place. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There are some of us, our names are at places it shouldn't be there. Our pictures are at places it shouldn't be there. Our hands are at places it shouldn't be there. Our, be there. our finger nails are at places it shouldn't be there. Portions of our garments are at places it shouldn't be there. But wherever your something is, which is fighting against you, the fire of the Lord destroyed that thing. The fire of the Lord destroyed that thing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, there is power above all powers. And that is the power of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When death strikes, it will respect Jesus. When death strikes, it, it will not respect medicine. But it will respect Jesus. Am I communicating at all? I said it will respect Jesus Christ. And as you mention the name of Jesus Christ, and as you are carrying Jesus on your hands, you are safe. That accident cannot take your life. Because you are in that trot trot. Nobody will die in that trot trot. Everybody shall be preserved in that trot trot. Because you are in that trot trot. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anywhere you enter, you enter with a host of angels. In Psalm 68 verse 20. He that is our God is the God of salvation. And unto God belong the issues from death. Many of us don't know the kind of God we worship. He that is our God is the God of salvation. Is the God of security. Is the God of your deliverance. Matters that concern death <laughs> belong to him. I said it belong to him. He said I have the key. It doesn't belong to sickness. Matters that concern your death belong to him. He has the power. It's not the doctor who can say I give you three months. He, he, he doesn't have that power. I give you three months to live. No. <laughs> there is only one man who has that power. The man above there seated on the right side of the father. The one who overcame death. The one who has the keys of hell and death. He can say I give you three days. No, the doctor. Anyone that has given you three days, anyone that has given you one week, anyone that has said you will not cross the zebra, I cancel that timetable. I said I cancel that timetable. I cancel that timetable in the name of Jesus Christ. One day I was praying for somebody. I said that could not bomb Payamobi. Then some power said, Why do you want to deliver him? And now to me, BB Sans, I didn't think I person with general. I said, Shut up. No, I said, Kawanutu. I have given a command. Yours is to comply. What the Anis obey us to Tia Mania Makan. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And they said, 
His mother has eaten some people's own. You, you don't want you don't want us to eat her. They said, they said this December she will not cross. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When President Akufu speaks, who is assemblyman to speak? Am I communicating at all? When President Akufu speaks, assemblyman, whatever you have to say, you swallow it. Are you understand what I'm saying? I said you will swallow it. So whatever the messenger of God speaks over your life, every contrary power must submit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is not the papa. The enemy he does papa. How many of you understand pam pam? You understand pam pam? They do pam pam, but they don't have anything. So Praise the Lord. Amen. And up to today, they couldn't chop her meat. That one, that person also is here today. That that person person also is here. Here. That person also here today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This December you cross it. I said, sir, December. 2020 December you cross it. 2020 December. I said you will cross all the demarcation lines that the enemy has drawn for you. You will cross it by the mercy of God. You cross it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let by your own strength you cannot cross. But by the mercy of God. By the grace of the Lord. By the precious blood of Jesus. You will cross. Shout I am crossing. Oh, shout I am crossing. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his children. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his children. Psalm 116, verse 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his children. Anytime a child of God is about to die, it's very, very important to God. Very, very important. Because at your time of death, Either angels must come for you or demons must come. For you. So if God does not take you, some demons will come and take you to where you shouldn't go. Hey, by the time you are ready to go, angels are ready to carry you to, to Abraham's bosom. So the death of the people of God is very precious in his sight. He doesn't, he doesn't just leave it for it to happen anyhow. God is alert so that the enemy will not have his way. Am I communicating at all? When Moses died, the devil wanted to go and take the body of Moses. Because there is an assignment for the body of Moses. The body of Moses must come back to do some assignment. The Bible says that on the mountain of transfiguration, Moses and Elijah appeared. They appeared and they met Jesus. On the mountain of transfiguration, the body of Moses and Elijah appeared to Jesus. And the devil want to abort that plan, that agenda. He want to apply a body so that it will not happen. So he wanted to trap the body of Moses. He wanted to, to, to capture the body of Moses. And, and Jemichael came there and said the Lord rebuke you. And God himself buried Moses. Nobody buried Moses. God himself buried Moses. Elijah to nobody buried him. Chariot of fire came to carry him from there. Because their body shall be needed. At the end time, the second coming of Christ after their body, they will, they will come back. Moses and Elijah. Moses and Elijah. Praise the Lord. There is another person called Enoch. He too, he too, he too, he too didn't die. Am I communicating? Every interest that the enemy is having in your life because of your future and because of your assignment, I pray that it shall be shattered. God will not hand you over to the devil. Say, I receive the grace of the Lord. I said, God will not hand you over to death. 
I have met death face to face. But God delivered me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He wanted to take me away before my time. From when I was nine years and ten years old. Till when I became 27 years old. 28 years Still they wanted to take me. When I was 21 years old, they came again. I remember the time I was 21 years old. They wanted to catch me. Then an, an angel of fire came down from above with a sword of fire in his hand. Within one second, he came down from above and scattered all of them. Scattered all of them. Am I communicating at all? The Lord shall preserve you. I said, The Lord shall preserve you. The Lord shall defend you. The Lord shall deliver you. I pray that in your time of danger, your angel will not be bound. Many, many of us, our angel is like a fowl that rain has beaten him. Fowl that rain has beaten him. Looks more buffo. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But your angel must be a, a, an angel like a lion with a sword. In his that every direction that the enemy will come from your angel will face it hallelujah amen so in psalm 118 verse 18 he said, the lord has not given me over unto death the lord has not given me over unto death if god has not given you over to death who is he that would wants to give you over to death if god has not handed you over to death. Who is he that wants to hand you over Why to death? It shall not happen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In First Samuel chapter eleven, verse thirteen. And Saul said, "There shall not a man be put to death this day, for today the Lord has wrought salvation in Israel." None of you shall be put to death. Either by sickness or by accident. Either by disaster or catastrophe. I said you shall not be put to death. He said there shall not a man be put to death. Today. For today the Lord has wrought salvation in Israel. When the forces of salvation are at work, death cannot take effect. He said because the Lord, the Lord has effected salvation, nobody shall be put to death. So it is the forces of salvation that ensures that death is not effective. When the forces of salvation are activated, the potency of death is broken. Say in the name of Jesus Christ. Say in the name of Jesus Christ. I fire the arrows of salvation right now, and I disarm every agent of death. Say I fire the arrows of salvation, and I disarm every agent of death. Say right now, I activate the forces of salvation. Say I activate the forces of salvation and I declare every perpetrator of death, every perpetrator of death, expire, expire, expire. expire. Say arrows of salvation, disarm them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Sit, sit down. So there are forces and there are forces. When death comes, every human being is helpless. But the human being that has Jesus <laughs> has advantage. The human being that has the blood of Jesus has advantage. When death comes, rich men are helpless. Presidents are helpless. But those who have the name of Jesus, they have the upper hand. Because the name of the Lord is a strong power. And the righteous will run into it and go and hide. And they are safe. I'm telling you that you are safe. 
by the word of the Lord, you are safe. By the word of the Lord, you are secure. By the word of the Lord, you are sheltered. There is a refuge around you. You are not vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ, let darkness and the and the shadow of death stain it. That's what the Bible says. Job chapter three, verse five. It says, "Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it." Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the dead terrify it. Darkness and the shadow of death. They are twin brothers. And sisters. Let darkness and the shadow of death. Anytime you see shadow of death, they are talking about death. But when you see my shadow, it means I'm around. So when you see my shadow, it means I'm around. So when you see my shadow, so when we are talking about the shadow of death it means death is around am I communicating at all so he said let darkness and the shadow of death stain it so, so the powers of death they come to stain your destiny they come, they come to contaminate your life they, they come to blemish the glory of God upon your life. the forces of death the forces of darkness they always work together they come to brutalize people's destiny they come to soil your destiny and take away the color of your glory but God has designed that your destiny shall experience beauty God has designed that your destiny will be improved and be upgraded by the forces of darkness and the forces of death they want to stain the plan of God for your life but every agenda that they are bringing shall be aborted in the name of Jesus Christ let darkness and the shadow of death so you see death is always associated with darkness he said let darkness and the shadow of death in the Bible, most often than not, when you hear darkness, it goes with the shadow of death. They always go to So the Bible said, let darkness and the shadow of death. Wherever there is darkness, death is attractive. Wherever there is darkness, death cannot be absent. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You cannot render death impotent without light. Without light. You cannot render death impotent. If you don't carry light, you cannot disarm death. Without light, you are not fortified against the forces of death. It is the absence of light that makes people vulnerable to the forces of death. It is the absence of light that makes people vulnerable to the forces of death. The light of God at work in you gives you immunity against the agencies of death. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you cannot get light without Jesus Christ. You cannot get light without the word of God. These are the two forces that bring light into your life. So Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And the Bible said that the entrance of your word gives light. And give understanding to this. So anybody that carries Jesus, you are carrying light. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody that carried the word of God is carrying light. These are the two powers that disarm darkness and render death important. John chapter 9, verse 5. Psalm 119, verse 130. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. John chapter 9, verse 5. Jesus said he is the light then Psalm 119 verse 130 so there is an answer to the issue of death there is an answer the death issue there is an answer to it praise the Lord Hallelujah. so when death strikes you cannot be helpless I said when death strikes when death appears you cannot be helpless
Thank you for listening. For more of those messages, follow us on YouTube, Paris Amar from TV, and on Facebook, BCI Dominion Sanctuary. God bless you for listening.